I speak today on our greatest teacher, Saint Paul. Paul is our greatest and most ardent teacher, as he personally wrote the majority, 71% of the New Testament himself, with his great supportive, exhortative, instructive, explanatory, and deeply personal letters to the colonies of the faithful he either personally established or assisted in. Those he personally called with the good news, baptized them with the blessings of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, one at a time, and then gave them the life-giving bread and wine, the body and blood of the Lord, or the colonies others established, but he, like the great shepherd he was, maintained and supported kept them from wandering away from the word and following some fly-by-night false prophet or a very good speaker of faith that was easier to follow, but they were simply thieves of souls. Thieves of souls sent by the evil one or regular thieves, con men of the first and second century taking advantage of the new game in town and trying to steal the funds of the congregation which would have otherwise have sent them back to Jerusalem or have used them to build their own church which is a building name that was not yet known again taking the money and running ironically similar to the false prophets and thieves of souls today. These new faithful ones didn't yet know what their place of worship would be called. Many assumed it would be a synagogue as they had come from the Jewish faith. But once they crossed the Jordan, the growing number of disciples to the faith, these new Christians, were not coming from Judaism but from paganism or full atheism. They had no belief in either a polytheistic many gods like the Romans or the Hellenistic Greeks or a monotheistic a single god system such as the Abrahamic, Christianic, Judaic or Islam. So a synagogue made no sense to these, nor a temple, as they associated that word with the Roman god places of worship all over their cities and put up regardless of what they might say in complaint. But church was an old word, unfamiliar to most of these people, and Paul and the others of learning started to insert this into their writings, into their conversations, into all of their discussions with the new faith groups. Paul wrote to the many Christian groups throughout Rome. Paul's letters to the Romans, Corinth, the first and second letters to the Corinthians, Galatean, Galatians, Ephesus, Ephesians, Philippi, Philippians, Colossus, Colossians, Thessalonia, Thessalonians, and the Christians outside Jerusalem, the letters to the Hebrews, as well as to his disciple, St. Timothy, the beautiful and personal letter. Some of the writings are quite circular and difficult. Others clear and painful to read, like one upcoming where he tells someone, don't be boasting about how holy and great you are. Those who are truly holy, those that have carried this faith on their shoulders, do it silently, never displaying their scars like battle wounds. I am proud of what I have borne for my Savior's sake, for his name 
for his word. But by my pride, I am simply showing my weakness to his great strength. Look at what he did. Jesus is Paul's only treasure. Paul's only light in the darkness of his cell. His struggles with each faith group and the people. He spoke of his troubles only to the Lord, and that is who guided his path, his mind, his writings. The Lord is my only treasure, his love my only goal of each day. I hope each day that he will take me to him this night, but I have more work, more suffering to do on his part and I am not yet obedient enough to him. Though I work to his will every day, I must work harder to become more obedient. What is your treasure? How do you place Christ in your life? Where is he when you are cut off from that parking spot you were waiting for? Do you ever then use bad behavior, bad words. Oh no, not a Christian. No, especially not in the parking lot of church. No, there's never bad behavior in the church's parking lot. Oh, never. Focus on where Christ is in your life as you are being profane, as you are cussing someone out as you are thinking terrible thoughts of someone giving someone a new rear orifice and other similar non-christian behaviors find christ before you go there Then look to see what Paul says you should do. Wait till you see what Sirach says you should do next week. Peace be with each of you.